All right, so picking up where we left off, I've got the three brushes I've selected to use, a big round, a medium brown, a tiny round, my Q-tips, my paint, my water, and I am ready to go. I reference my original a lot. Um, I'm kind of keep it right by my side because the goal here is to copy. I'm trying really hard to study this painting and uh, do it justice. The only thing I really changed from the original was I made the foreground a little bit higher contrast because I liked it. Also, who knows how terrible my printout is. So washing in the tree here. Um, and I'm starting to put some of the branches in. Um, and I'm going to put this big tree in here. I'm using a uh, raw umber and a mix of raw umber and ultra blue. And I use that raw umber ultra blue color to make the kind of black that you see in the foreground of the painting. The whole painting uses only four or five colors. I use raw sienna, raw umber, ultra blue, viridian green, and that's about it. Every color is made from those colors. And the colors that I've mixed up, I use the uh, raw sienna pretty much straight and I use some of the raw umber straight, and then sometimes I'm mixing the raw umber with black. Um, I'm not painting with any coffee, but I always paint with coffee near me for, for my mouth. Um, so right now, the, the colors that I'm using to kind of wash in the branches are, it's mostly the raw umber color. Um, the colors that I've mixed up, that, that background color, that's a mix of ultra blue, viridian green, with a little bit of raw sienna mixed into it to kind of mute it out. Um, and that is really mixed in everywhere in the painting. And as I'm going, I really see where it sits. Um, and I'm pretty being pretty, um, pretty vigilant about trying to get my branches exactly where they are on the original. I sketched in some of them, the bigger ones I, I sketched in. So I'm, I'm using getting those in first. Um, and then I'll kind of go off of where those are and the grid lines that I can still see to get um, to get as close as I can to what he's done. You see there, I'm mixing in some raw sienna, lifting it with a Q-tip, really getting those branches in as accurately as I can. But there's a lot of colors mixed into even every single branch, so um, I'm trying to get that kind of depth uh, in the painting. Working on the foreground here, um, starting to wash in. And the way that I'm doing this is I'm just kind of looking at where I see color and putting it down. And then as I as I move forward, I'm like, oh, I didn't get enough of that color there or more of that color there. It's hard to tell when you're working with watercolor um, exactly what it's going to look like when it dries. If you've got if you've got it really wet, it's often a lot darker than it's actually going to be when it's dry. So you really have to be patient and wash some colors in together and just look at what's there. There's also a green color that I've mixed up here, which uses uh, mostly Viridian green and raw sienna. Um, I occasionally mix a little bit of blue into that, um, but there's a green color, especially in the foreground that you'll see me start to work in. Right there, there it is, there's my green color. Um, and it's in those some of those trees. Some of the leaves are just the blue color, some of them are the green color. Um, there's a little bit of everything. And one of the things I think that's really cool about what this artist did is he painted like four or five different kinds of leaves, um, which I'm sure is true to the trees that are in the original. Um, and so trying to figure out how to put that in is one of the fun challenges of this painting.
fair warning, I did not uh, film every single step here. So right now I've got all the branches basically blocked in. Um, and I, I did not film every step of that. I'm going to show you how I use the Q-tip here. In the midground here, those little small trees in the midground, I think the contrast is too high. So I just dab um, the water on the Q-tip and then I just kind of push and lift, not trying to pull too far. And that allows me to really soften up areas that want to be softened up. It's also wonderful if you've got like a wet edge that you don't want that's dried. Um, you can use that Q-tip to kind of soften that up. And now I am back to this foreground here making this rooty, rocky cliff look rooty and rocky enough. One of the things that's awesome about this painting but that makes it difficult to um, to copy is even though there's only four or five colors used in the whole painting, there's they're in different concentrations and back and forth and a little bit here and a little bit there. Um, so you can see that center well of my mixing thing, I've actually kind of divided that up. I've got that sort of black color on one side and then closest to me is the green color. Um, and then I have some yellow sitting around the rim and then I've got the like brownie uh, raw umber color on the other side. So I keeping all the colors mixed in the well, and that can allow me to make my green a little bit grayer or my green a little bit browner um, and work with all the colors together in a really active, alive way. The original of this painting says that there was some ink used, so I imagine a lot of this lining that I'm doing um, was probably done by the original artist in some sort of pen or quill. I don't know. Um, this painting is circa 1640. It's Flemish. Um, and the original is the size that I am painting in. Um, so I should be able to get a level of detail that he got, but maybe not if I don't have a pen. I have a pen. I'm just not using it. So here I'm starting to really fill in the leaves. Um, these are kind of laid in in a green wash. So these are the blobbiest of the leaves in the painting. Um, and I'm just kind of laying in the wash and then using the raw umber or the raw umber mixed with blue to like define leaf-like shapes within the kind of blob of greeny color there. Um, and then if you see the leaves that kind of go across the sky, you can barely see them in the original. They're these little tiny light blue dots and I'm gonna put some of those in here in a second. Gotta have more color. So there I'm, I'm finding this way to kind of just dance those across the page. I'm using where the branches sort of are, but also the original to dictate kind of where those, where those go. He's got these leaves sort of floating in space. Um, so I'm trying to copy that and they're really, really pale and washed out in this upper part of the painting. So I'm using a very, very thin version of the color. You can see on the palette, I've got actually two little pools of the bluish color. One is much thinner than the other so that I can choose which one um, is the right one to use in a moment. I'm using my medium sized round brush here because uh, I kind of want the water to pool a little bit. And now I've finished um, most of the leaves here um, and I'm just showing you a little bit about how I outline them. So I just kind of blob the color in places and then outline them. The leaves that are on the tree, that are like in front of the tree, I had to lift with a Q-tip to get the color in and look right. So I kind of laid out where the leaves were and then I came in after I outlined them and lifted very gently with a Q-tip to get a sort of lighter tone for the leaves in there. And there are all my leaves done. And now I am working on the foreground, the last part of the painting. And I'm doing this kind of the same way I did the cliff, like looking for the color. All right, there's a bunch of yellow. Where, where does the yellow need to go? Oh, too much yellow, wash it out. Um, get that darkness in the foreground in. <clears throat> and once I put the yellow in, I think, oh, I probably need some other colors and all. That's my umber color that's, that's coming in. There's some green. 
Um, so I'm just working back and forth between the green color that I mixed up, the blue color that I mixed up, and the raw sienna and the raw umber. And those are really like the four colors that are in the painting. And we are almost done here and I get impatient and pick up my palette so that I can uh, move my arm a little bit less and get the final like leaf details and branch details from the foreground in. And I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. Like I said, I think my foreground is a bit more vivid and has a bit more contrast than the original. However, um, that's also true of nature, things in front of you. And this watercolor painting is um, almost 400 years old, so I imagine it's toned down over time. So maybe this is more true to the, what the artist originally painted. Um, but I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and hopefully that this is somewhat informative for how you should go about painting your old master watercolor. Advice I have is to be very patient. Um, <clears throat> I worked from the background to the foreground, but I did have to go back and forth a little bit as I realized colors were missing from places and things I forgot, or it was really hard to put in this background object without doing this thing in front of it first. Um, or some things in the foreground are lighter than things in the background, like some of these leaves that I had to lift in, in reverse. Um, so that's how I did it. Happy with that. And take a look at the whole thing. Um, and as a general composition, I am still happy with that. 